Wyman v. Wyman, case number 2020-5967 p.m. All parties and attorneys to please state their name and appearance for the record, starting with the plaintiff, Ms. Wyman. Kylie Wyman. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. Tara Sharp on behalf of the defendant, Douglas Wyman. And Mr. Wyman is present as well. Good morning, everyone. Today is the date and time set for hearing. For the motion, plaintiff's motion regarding parent time, custody, confidential address, and phone number. This matter is being done by remote technology due to the decisions of the Supreme Court and Chief Judge. The contents of this video may be the official record of a proceeding of the State of Michigan's Ninth Judicial Circuit. Unauthorized duplication, distribution, or alteration of said content is strictly prohibited. And today's date and time set for motion. Ms. Wyman, are you representing yourself today? Yes, I am. Okay. Let's cover the basic one first. There's a request for confidential address and phone number. Ms. Sharp, is there any objection to that? I don't believe my client would object to that. He does need to contact her regarding the child at times. But right now, I'm not 100% sure what the PPO says exactly regarding contact. But he will in the future, once the PPO drops, he'll have to have a phone number or a way to contact her regarding the child, which may be best to do it through like our family wizard or something like that. He's not allowed to contact me anyway because of criminal court. Not just the PPO. He just got charged with domestic and larceny. So he's not allowed to contact me anyhow. Okay. Well, we'll have to look into that because if you are going to raise a child together, there will be some way to communicate somehow. My staff's looking at the PPO right now. So we'll hold off on that. Ma'am, Ms. Wyman, you made a request for pairing time in custody. There is no current order in this file with regards to that. What are you asking for at this time? I'm asking for full custody because he has not been cooperating with the CPS worker like he's supposed to do for the domestic. That's according that's according to the CPS worker from his mouth. So unless the CPS worker is lying, then that's right from the CPS worker's mouth. There's also a investigation for criminal sexual conduct against both my children. The police report number is 21-6689. My older son came forward that he was having Douglas was having him watch pornographic videos that there was inappropriate touching on both of my children and that there was naked pictures being taken and all this stuff. And not only did he report it to me, but he also reported it to his counselor multiple times with the same story. And that Doug had also threatened. Yes. Have charges been in other criminal charges against Mr. Wyman for any CSCs? The police report was made a little over a month ago. I'm still waiting for them to the detective to come out. But there was a police report made and I'm waiting for the exam to be done by the doctor. OK. Any other criminal issues or pending charges? He just got put on probation for a year for the domestic and larceny against me, where he is to have no contact with me whatsoever. And he had gotten arrested on the domestic and larceny only because he violated the PPO two different times. And so that's when they went to go pick him up on the domestic charge. OK. Ms. Sharp, is your client currently on probation for domestic violence against Ms. Wyman? Yes, Your Honor. May I address one thing, though? There is an actual current agreement that was put into a pretrial form. They actually already had a final agreement of joint legal and joint physical custody and week on week off. Can you tell me where that is? Because we couldn't find the word order with there. Is it in a pretrial form? It's in the pretrial form that says that it is no longer contested. It's settled that it wasn't an issue at trial. And he and that I had also filed that he there was a domestic violence where he was controlling every time that I had court. He was at my house over the video court. That's not a lie. Ms. Wyman, this is the judge. Please don't speak until you're asked a question, OK? OK, I understand that. OK, just trying to make a record here. I'll ask you your opinion on things. But yes, it does look like in the pretrial order things were settled. Ms. Sharp, what was your understanding of the settlement? That they had joint legal, joint physical custody, week on week off parenting time. 
um, they had been exercising that up until um, I guess about a month and a half, two months ago. Um, and my understanding is if she wants to modify, she's, she's drafting it as if a temporary order. If she needs to modify it, I would see it as more of a Vod Barca hearing and uh, a best interest factors determination. Right now, there there is a, um, a, he is on probation, but there has been on both ends, domestic violence that have been dropped and dismissed, um, a charge against her, a charge against him. Um, it seems that it happens whenever, you know, they're not getting along. Um, and so I, I feel like there needs to be more of an, a determination, you know, if, if my client actually truly is as um, violent as what's being portrayed. Um, and I, I'm completely fine if the court deems it fit to hear it at the trial, um, but I do believe um, the pr proper procedure would be going through the Vod Barca hearing and um, the best determining the best interest factors. Well, I am now, it's only in a pretrial order that things have settled, the parenting time and custody are said to be settled, but it sounds like things have changed since this pretrial order, and I don't have a final order with what that settlement is. So at the trial on July 1st, we will go forward with parenting time and custody. Um, there's no order, just a, I'm sorry, there's a domestic pretrial order, but it doesn't tell me in detail what the agreement is. is. So I will open up parenting time, custody, and, and, and in fact, child support for the trial. Um, until then, I don't have an order. Uh, Ms. Wyman, you are expected to follow the rules of procedure and evidence at trial. I highly encourage you to get an attorney ready to go on July 1st. Um, but at this time, you know, just saying, well, there's a CPS case doesn't do much for the court. I need the right witnesses and you have to be able to determine who you're going to call and what evidence, but just allegations do not make a case. So I'll set it I, for trial. May I there say something? No, hold on. There is no order with regards to exactly what is parenting in custody time. Yes, Ms. Wyman, you have That's a question. Right. Yes. So last year on Mother's Day was actually the first domestic violence case against me from Doug. There was four total in 2020 and then the one in 2021. So there was four domestic cases against me. They denied my PPO last mm -hmm. last year. And that's why I went after a PPO again. Every time we had court, he was here besides one time watching what I was saying and telling me to drop the motion. He had Elliot in his arms in December, in 2000, December 20, 2020. He had Elliot in his arms when he assaulted me. It took three police officers to get Elliot out of his arms. I surrendered my son. They did not take him from me. Both of you, both of you. Ma'am, you're testifying. This is not the time for this, okay? Sir, you have an attorney. It's best for you not to talk. You will both be able to present your cases to me on July 1st. But please, whoever has the most heartbreaking case does not win. I need evidence. I need proof. It sounds like this relationship is a mess. Sounds like both of you may have some blame to be involved here. If you can't settle everything, we will handle it on July 1st. Ms. Wyman, I don't think you're understanding this, the concepts because you just keep wanting to testify, which is fine. But on July 1st, I need legally admissible evidence, okay? Ms. Wyman, do you understand that? Yeah, Ms. Wyman, you're on mute. Yeah, okay. Um, so basically okay, I would need to go to the courthouse that? and ask the, yes, I'm just asking a question, but I need to go to the courthouse and get all those documents from every domestic then that got dropped. I, I can't tell you what to do, but you can't just submit documents. You may need witnesses for those. So you do what you want to do, but I, I can't tell you what to do or give you legal advice, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay. And your Honor, yes. Your Honor, may I address one thing? My client has yet to see the child. I mean, I don't know. I know that, you know, that there's no specific order. Um, there was an agreement um, that wasn't drafted into an order because I was waiting to determine, you know, what was going to go on with the remaining part of it. Um, but my client has yet to see the child, and it's been two months. Okay. 
Do you, Miss Wyman, have any? You have an objection to your Mr. Wyman seeing the children? Is that correct? Yes, it is. Until I until the investigation for the CSC is done and everything else, because he nonstop lies. Yes, I have a problem absolutely with that. Okay. And Ms. he's allowed Sharp, to contact there, me. Looking... Pardon me. He's allowed to contact me through his mother, and she like supposedly had messaged me twice through an app called Snapchat, but the messages disappeared, so there was no proof of her even messaging me, if it was really even her. Yeah, that's, I'm reading the personal protection order from December 15, 2020. Douglas Wyman is prohibited from entering onto the property where the petitioner lives, assaulting, attacking, molesting, or wounding petitioner and or her children. Removing minor children from petitioner who has legal custody, except uh, I, I don't know where the judge got that, but has legal custody, except as allowed by a custody Why? or parenting time order. He's not allowed to stalk. It means no contact. <laughs> Threatening to kill or injure physically the petitioner or her and or children. Okay. Ms. Sharp, I'm sorry your client has not seen the children in two months. Unfortunately, there's so many other outside things going on that I will have to get the domestic file that is he is on probation for to check their probation orders. I cannot do a temporary order at this time. I couldn't get him into family and children's services for supervised parent time before the trial date of July 1st. So I will take judicial notice of the personal protection order and Kalamazoo County files as I have the right to do that. And I will be prepared for trial on July 1st. If I feel that a lot of this is, is if I don't believe the petitioner, I will consider make up parenting time for all this time that is missed. If I believe the petitioner uh, and Mr. Wyman equally, We'll address it then, uh, but we will get through the best interest for the children on July 1st. Any questions, Ms. Sharp? No, thank you, Honor. Any questions, Ms. Wyman? No, thank you. Okay. Yes, at this time, I will mark um, Ms. Wyman's address as confidential. I will hold a uh, reserve on the phone number. Uh, till we see where we're at and how we're going to do custody and parenting time so they can contact with the children or involving the children and chances are that'll be something like our family wizard. All right, all prior orders not affected by today remain in effect. We'll see you folks here ready to go for trial. I will also put in the temporary or in the order, the temporary order, all witnesses and exhibits shall be exchanged 10 days before trial. So Ms. Wyman, that means you have to give your witness list and the exhibits you would plan to admit to Ms. Sharp 10 days before trial. And Ms. Sharp, well, you know this, but I'm just making the record. You have to give your witness list and your exhibits to Ms. Wyman 10 days before trial. Any questions by anybody? No. No, thank you. All prior orders remain in effect. We'll see you folks by Zoom on July 1st at 1.30.